It's a tale as old as the Nintendo 64. A major media company brings together its biggest characters to battle for supremacy in a unique take on a fighting game. Super Smash Bros. revolutionized the multiplayer fighting game, and today there are dozens of so-called Smash clones, building their own communities under the collective genre of platform fighters. We've seen dozens of these games attempt to capture a fraction of the commercial success and sustained esports activity that Smash has enjoyed for the last roughly 20 years. None have even come close. Smash is the platform fighter esport, and no new IP or video game property is going to change that. Here we go now. Oh shit, chain grab! That's yo, so cool! Yo, yo, boom! <laughs> Reptar! Wow! <laughs> so the game already is going to have better online play than the other game. And if you can wave land... He said the word! Save. That's Puff Russ! That's Russ! This looks good. This game looks good. We got, you got the wave dashing and you got all these crazy movement options. I'm, 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 I'm gonna try this game. So what is different this time? Why is there so much anticipation around this new game? Why are Melee pros reacting to character reveals for a game that is trying to challenge their beloved eSport? Why is there so much hope surrounding a game that lets Danny Phantom punch Spongebob? Let's talk about the eSport's potential of Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. On the surface, the answer seems simple. SpongeBob, the Ninja Turtles, and Avatar are all massively popular media franchises. If any of those characters were added to Smash, the internet would implode from sheer hype. But put all of them into their own Smash-style game and you've got a pretty exciting concept. Nickelodeon is actually one of the few companies that can harness the same level of mass appeal, nostalgia, and kid-friendly characters to compete with Nintendo. But the potential for Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl goes much further than just recognizable characters. The game is developed by Ludosity, the studio behind another wacky platform fighter known as Slap City. This team recognizes the value of skill expression in a platform fighter. Nick All-Stars has many of the mechanics that make Melee's movement so satisfying satisfying to play and exciting to watch, like wave dashing. Ludosity has also added its own twists to the formula, such as air dashes, projectile reflects for every character, and a greater emphasis on combos. Plus, the game has rollback netcode, ensuring that its online experience will be infinitely better than Ultimate. Putting netcode like this in the hands of Ultimate players, I, I, I just want to live in a world where we never have to put up with delay-based netcode uh, again, and that there's enough pressure from enough voices that developers don't put out fighting games with bad netcode anymore. I think that's like one of the most exciting things to me. Adding even further to the game's potential is the fact that it's available on every relevant platform. No platform fighter with this level of mass market recognizability has ever been available to play on so many different gaming devices. Despite the promising mechanics and beloved characters, if Nick All-Stars had released just a few years ago, it likely would not have received the same level of excitement and hope from the platform fighter community. This is because despite everything Nintendo has done, the Smash community has still held some small shred of hope that one day, the company would finally embrace esports. Instead, Nintendo repeatedly shut down online tournaments amidst the pandemic, forced tournaments to cancel side events for modded versions of their games, and has made it crystal clear that anything short of playing the latest release as Sakurai intended is grounds for potential legal action. For the most part, all hope in Nintendo is gone, and it seems like the developer will continue to hold back the Smash Bros. scene for the foreseeable future. Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl, on the other hand, has no Nintendo characters or music in it. Its developer has already confirmed that competitive play and honest-to-goodness rank modes are a part of their vision. And also, the long-term esports potential of Nick All-Stars is huge. Its biggest competitor already has a community ready to embrace a newcomer to the genre. It will get to build off the established Smash scene, as it is a natural addition to Smash tournaments and other fighting game events. In fact, Beyond the Summit, a tournament organizer that recently gave out the largest prize pool in Melee history, has already added Nick All-Stars to the lineup of its major Smash event main stage. Popular Smash Bros. esports team and fighting game community Panda Global has also already had a successful celebrity charity tournament for the launch of the game, featuring big names like Jaden Animations, Ludwig, and Moist Critical. I'm sorry, but Eric is just getting better playered right now. <laughs> Look, no air dashing. Oh my- Oh, oh the ghostly oh whale! God. It's Pop really the difference between the, the people with Smash background and the ones who don't is definitely how they're recovering. Bro, he really edge hogged in a charity tournament. I can't believe he did that. Oh, Despite he, moving off for two whole games as Powder Toast Man to give us a game five. Oh no, simply is just 
getting dominated right now, 200%. Yeah, that's going to do it. Dash attack in the jab. We'll close it out. I am really looking forward to watching a lot of this game because I think that because the game is so, like... So, there's so much overpowered stuff that like, you know, it's it's like if if, if, if everyone's overpowered, no one's overpowered. <laughs> Dude, I can't wait until everyone says this character is busted. If the game is commercially successful, it can easily outpace Smash in official prize event pools. Considering Nintendo has never provided prize money to a single major, pretty much ever. Nintendo has set the bar so low that anything short of actively harming the community will be a welcome change in developer relationship for the scene. But the Nick All-Stars community won't have to settle for just being left alone. In an interview with Kotaku, Ludosity CEO Joel explained that not only is the company committed to competitive, but there likely won't be issues with the IP that have plagued other games like Dragon Ball Fighters. Quote, Nickelodeon is absolutely on board with having the game be competitively viable. That has been in the conversation from the start. That's why they came to us. End quote. Yeah, I do think that the developers are paying really close attention to the scene in Nick All-Stars, and I think that um, they, again, I think they have a solid, pretty solid base package, but it does sound like they want to iterate a bit, and I'm really excited to see the direction they take the game. While the potential is certainly there, Nick All-Stars' success is by no means guaranteed. The game has nothing close to the level of polish of the latest entry in the Smash Bros. franchise. The lack of voice lines and theme music is noticeable, and will certainly hurt the game's appeal with casual fans. I don't care as much about this, but a lot of people have been complaining about the lack of voice acting, which I think, for some of these characters, it feels a little bit... I, I, I don't care that much, but I've, I've seen it described as soulless, right? Where you've got, like, Nigel Thornberry, but, like, you know, he's... When I think Nigel Thornberry, I'm thinking, you know, he's saying Smash It! Right and all the and all the stuff that Nigel Thornberry says in, in the Wild Thornberries, but instead he just makes bird noises. There's no there are no voice lines. Granted, this could be another monkey paw phenomenon where maybe we want voice acting, but then they add it, and then all of a sudden you just have to listen to SpongeBob going da like every second. That might just be annoying in its own way. I don't know, but this is something that people are saying. While its visuals and audio fall short of Ultimate in a lot of ways, there remains plenty of hope for the future. We've discussed Power Rangers Battle for the Grid on this channel before. The game took an established fighting game format and married it with a popular television series. But upon initial release, the game had very few features, a tiny cast, mediocre visuals, and no voice lines. However, it had excellent online play and innovative mechanics that created a unique experience for fans of the genre. Over time, polish improved and more characters were added, and the competitive scene steadily grew. Based on recent interviews, it's clear that Ludosity hopes to continue improving the game in the future. Quote, Our focus was creating the best possible gameplay experience for core brawling fans and Nickelodeon fans around the globe. As we continue to build the Nick All-Star Brawl franchise, we will be reviewing all options, which may include adding VO down the road. End quote. It does feel like there's more crossover than ever before for whatever reason. A lot of like fighting game players feel like, oh, if I jump into these sorts of games, I'm going to be at a disadvantage because it's so different from what I'm used to. I don't think it's directly the result of Nickelodeon All-Stars Brawl, but I think we are seeing, I just feel like there's, it, just anecdotally, it feels like there's more crossover than before. There's more, I see a lot of, like, yeah, I just see a lot of FGC people on the timeline talking about like, wow, Spongebob looks ridiculous, you know? Even if they're not going to stick with the game again, like they don't need to be dedicated players, but it's cool to at least see them be fans or to be spectators uh, because, because that's, you know, every competitive scene needs a fan base. It might be unlikely that Nick All-Stars will replace Smash anytime soon, but the tone of anticipation for this game shows that we have entered a new era for the platform fighter esports community, a world where we could actually have developers support their games, and finally see a more developer-backed fighting game scene, instead of one that actively tries to fight against its own community. Oh no! He hit the Stimpy on him! This video was made possible thanks to our wonderful patrons. A huge thank you to everybody on this list and shout out to Jason, B, Brendan, Kubi, David, Foxy, IRYN, Lyra, Mauve, Sierra, Shampoo, Weeaboo, Spartacus, and Yoshichi for being Platinum supporters. And an extra special shout out to Steven, Noodles, Marco, Andy, and Oriorial for being Diamond supporters. And an extra Extra special shout out to Fool from the Art of Warfare for being our Grand Master supporter. Thanks a ton everyone, we really appreciate it. If you also want to support our channel and unlock perks, check out the Patreon link in the description below, or join our Discord server. If you want to help us out in a different way, leaving a like, subscribing, and hitting the bell to stay up to date is also appreciated. My name is Nikita, and thank you for watching.